Hi everybody, it's Curious Raven. It's really good to be back and I feel much better. I did get the sweetest message from a parent that let me know that I have a little fan out there that loves my videos and it just makes me smile so much. Thank you Isabella for loving my content and listening to all of my stories. I hope you enjoy these stories as well. My aunt and uncle moved five hours north from me. I live in Ontario, Canada, just an hour outside of Toronto. They moved into this beautiful old farm-like house. It was huge. It's near the end of a dirt road that seems to go on forever, surrounded by dense woods. I haven't been in a long time, so I apologize if my description doesn't make any sense. When you pull up to the house, you pull into a U-shaped driveway. There's a concrete path that goes from the front door to the side porch and basement door. There's three windows on the top floor to the left and a few windows on the main floor. Once you walk in, there's a mudroom for your boots, coats, and bags. Walk through the mudroom, you enter the great room. The great room had a pool table, a couch, two chairs, a fireplace, and a piano. In the corner near the big windows and piano is a little bathroom with a window looking out to the backyard. By the pool table is the door to the deck and yard. To the right are the stairs that go to the second floor, and then there are a few stairs that go down to the basement. There's a little computer room at the end of the stairs between the doorway to the great room and basement. Upstairs was the living room and kitchen as well as a dining room table. From the table you can see up four stairs to a landing with three rooms. The house always had a weird feeling to it. The basement scared me all the time. I felt like I was being watched from the dark corners of the room. If I had to go down there I always ran and didn't look behind me whatsoever. I always felt like someone or something was right behind me the entire time I was down there. There's a heavy door that separates the great room from the basement and stairs. On quiet days, you could hear the door opening and closing by itself. You could hear footsteps all through the house, some sounding like they're coming from the basement. Doors would slam shut if they were left open, and the windows are almost always closed, and these are heavy doors. You felt like you were never alone in that house, like someone or something was always there and always watching. The nights were the worst. You could hear the footsteps coming up the stairs, the sounds of a child running, things moving around. It was always just sounds. You never really seen anything other than flashes of something out of the corner of your eyes. My aunt and uncle had cats for the longest time, so you can blame some of the sounds on them. And maybe it was the cats moving just out of sight, but this sort of activity continued even after the cats passed away. It was a family dinner. We were all at the table, me at the back near the wall, so I can see up the stairs and hallway leading to the three rooms. We were all eating dinner, and I got this feeling to look down the hallway. I just stopped eating and turned my head to look. I saw a black mass leaning over the wood railing over the top of the great room. It didn't move. It didn't turn its head. It was just leaning over the railing looking down. Being young, it scared me. I kept looking back to see if it was still there or if I could see it again. My grandpa got annoyed and closed the door to the rooms. It was weird. No one else seen it. No one really believed me either. It was the weirdest thing. It was the first time I actually seen a figure or being in that house. Till then, it was all sounds and feelings. I had gone to see my aunt and uncle one summer. I was much older, maybe 15. I was laying in bed and it was a hot summer night. So I had the blankets half on, half off. I never felt comfortable or safe enough in that house to sleep without a blanket. 
I was laying in bed, listening to the crickets and scrolling through social media when the house got really quiet. The house is already very quiet, but it got still like the calm before the storm. All of a sudden, footsteps came running up the stairs and stopped at my closed bedroom door. They sounded like a child's, too heavy to be a cat, but this time, their cats were long gone. My aunt and uncle have no kids either. It was just me, my aunt and uncle in the house at the time. It was too light to be them. So I froze and I just listened, waiting for my door to creak open, but it never did. I waited for an hour or so before putting anything on to watch and I never heard the footsteps again that night. The next morning I asked my aunt and uncle if they heard anything and they told me no. Feeling like I was crazy, I never said anything again to them about it. My aunt and uncle have admitted feeling like they're being watched and not alone, but they've never seen anything like what I seen that one night. I haven't been to their place in years, and I don't think I want to go back. The house is weird, and something isn't right in that house. You can also hear weird sounds coming from the forest around the house. So, my first experience with seeing a demon ghost was when I was seven years old. It was a shadow man at my grandma's house. Believe me if you want, but I remember him touching my neck and me feeling it. I wasn't that scared because at that time I didn't know what it was. Fast forward a few years, I moved out of my grandma's house and it followed me. I seen him again just watching me, then decided to get a spirit box to talk to him and he said he wanted power and a friend. Fast forward to now I'm 18 years old, and he just watches me sometimes, but he follows me when I do paranormal stuff, and I'm okay with it, because he hasn't done anything to hurt me. So when I was 15, I seen the shadow man and thought nothing of it. Next thing you know, I get a weird vibe, and my phone goes flying, and then I hear a weird voice, which was him saying, move, and the next thing you know, I get scratched on my back, I run out of my room and I go back in about 30 minutes. And my light was shattered and my room was a disaster. So I figured since the vibe of this subreddit seemed to be okay, I might try to gradually post some of the fairly intense encounters I have had so far in this life. I'm about 30 and most of these occur between 10 to 20 years of age. Apologies in advance, they may often be long-winded. When I was 10 years old, my friend moved from Toronto to a small town of about a thousand people in Royal, New Brunswick, Canada. It is a historic area mostly old-timers with a strong religious culture to the point that this town of a thousand has six large churches and several smaller ones. The house we moved into was a small duplex with us occupying both top and bottom and there were no other houses for about one kilometer. The only other property placed nearby was a historic graveyard with graves dating at the earliest in the 1800s, and this was about 20 feet from the house. As the place had been the old grave keeper's house, on the day of my 11th birthday, I had invited a friend to sleep over while my sisters were sleeping upstairs. I had the only room in the basement to myself, which had been converted from a wine cellar. Enough set up. On the night of the sleepover, everything had been normal so far, aside from the usual weird feelings. Traps turning on themselves, which I didn't think was spooky yet, and lights flickering, which we also think was just normal for the area. My parents were out drinking, and when my sisters went to bed around 10 p.m., my friend and I went to bed shortly after, turning off all the lights, popping on the oil heater, dead of winter at the time, 
and set up his sleeping bag on the floor of my room. Around 12 midnight, known because of the chime clock, I had woke in bed feeling uneasy and frigid cold. I sat awake for about 20 or so minutes. It felt like until I started hearing strange noises. They sounded like an old man moaning in pain and a chain or something metal started shaking. Me thinking I was asleep, panicking because I also heard the noises. The noises continued for about five more minutes or so and then he begged me to turn on the lights because they were scared. I flicked on the small lamp at the foot of the bed. Just a few moments later, my friend started screaming and pointing to the ceiling. On the ceiling, covering pretty much the whole space, were what looked like a dozen of shadowy hands, arms stretching out from the above, reaching down towards us, but too far away to really grab anything. My friend was religious and started praying in a loud voice over and over again and asking the hands to stop. They soon did, and for a moment, everything was fine again. It got warm, the hands were gone, and my friend and I were both starting to calm down. Then it got much, much worse. Suddenly, the lamp turned off. Everything went from kind of dark to completely black and dead silent. A figure I can only describe as a tall, shadowy person draped entirely in a black robe and carrying a large book, walked through the wall to my left, which was at about five feet from my, from my standing location. We could only see them because despite being all black, they were illuminated in a bright reddish yellow glow. The figure stopped, turned, and stared at me for an uncomfortable amount of time, and eventually held up a long, not crazy long, but like maybe six inches finger in my direction, then pointed to their book, which then opened by itself. At this point, I let out the loudest scream I possibly could, hoping to wake up my sisters, only to notice there was no sound. I looked to my friend, who was there, mouth open, looking like they are screaming as well, and still no sound. I looked to the window to see if maybe my parents are back, hoping they are. And the window was pitch black, not even the outside light is shining through, or the usually spooky view of the graveyard I have, just blackness. I look back to the figure and it starts to move towards me, but I suddenly feel like there is no threat, and I feel a kind of knowing, almost like you get from when your grandparents are animals, and it walked towards me and disappears just before it comes into contact with my feet. Immediately after they disappear, the light comes back on. The window is no longer black, and I can hear again. I hear my door banging and my dad screaming at me from the other side. He has been there for hours, apparently, unable to get in. Hearing me and my friend screaming at the top of our lungs from the other side, I get up, let him in, which I had no problem with from my side and he lets me know what he just heard. He also lets me know the couple hours part, which to me didn't make sense, because from what I judged by the time, this went on from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. The sun was actually just starting to come up, which I know just noticed through the window. My friend called his parents to come and get him immediately, and shortly after left, I set up with my dad as everyone else went back to sleep, and we had a chat in the kitchen. Apparently, this wasn't the first scary thing to happen in this house in the few weeks we had been here. My mother was a homemaker and at the house all the time. Had been hearing moaning sounds during the day, seeing the appliances turn themselves on and off, and said that she kept being woken up by the sound of someone screaming in her ear in the middle of the night. My dad didn't believe it initially, but after I described to him my encounter, and the fact that he couldn't get into my room despite there being no lock on any door in our house, he started to. We moved out of the house less than a month later, which, to be honest, financially destroyed my family. We couldn't find a buyer because locals thought the place to be very haunted and we had to rent a small two-bedroom bungalow. For the rest of my young life, that friend would never talk to me or hang out with me again, despite having been my best friend up to that point, I thought. 
Years later at a party when I came home from university. I saw him at the campfire and started to chat. We went over what each other had been up to, what our goals were, etc. Eventually I asked why he stopped hanging out with me. He told me he still vividly remembered that night and then described it exactly how I remember it, down to the smallest details. He said he told his father when he got home what happened. And his father being the spiritual leader for his tribe, Native American, won't say reservation here, and his father told him to never come in contact with me, as there was a malicious spirit tied to my person that could start following him instead. Eventually, he stopped caring about that, and that's why he even talked to me at the party. End of encounter one. Let me know if you have any questions, or have had anything similar happen. I generally feel like I encountered something really unique compared to most, and that is what scares me about this. So, I'm not 100% positive this counts as a ghost story, but here it goes. So where I live was in Warwick. The house was built in the 1950s, I think, and our backyard was on Gorton Pond, pretty big pond for the area, which shared a border with the Warwick Police Station across the way, across the way about 250 yards straight across from our backyard, could hit a golf balls onto their lawn and used to. They were totally cool with it and saved any balls that made it across. To the left of our yard, there was a small beach, which was about 300 yards wide. Nothing big, just enough to entertain kids if they wanted to go swimming. The years this episode took place was 87-ish. In fact, no history prior to the event I witnessed. But in 95, a girl that was a grade behind me was murdered there. It was actually pretty gruesome. Also, my sister, who was three years old than me, was home alone one night in 97-ish and she was on the deck, which overlooks the pond, having a smoke, and she saw a series of lights over the pond, like flying crafts, and she actually called the police who saw the same shit and acknowledged her report directly. Nothing came of it. When I was about seven or eight years old, I started hearing a light hissing type of sound in my bedroom that I shared with my brother, who was a year and a half older, it would start just as it got dark out, and it was very faint at first, and would progress slowly over the hours, becoming louder and louder as the night went on. The hisses were anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds apart, sometimes about a minute or so apart. This occurred for about a month or so, but after the first few days, one night I asked my bro if he heard it at all, and he replied, Yes, it's Wookie. She's mad. Wookie, being our cat, was an all-black with big orange eyes Persian, one of the fluffy lat face cats. She was the sweetest thing in the world, and anyone who has cats knows that they don't just hiss all night long for no reason, and Persian cats are very docile to begin with. Wookie was an indoor cat, and we had no other animals. Being seven or eight at the time, I figured my brother was right and just shrugged it off. That is, until a few nights later. I wake up presumably around 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. as everyone else was sound asleep. The hissing is much louder than it was earlier at bedtime, but not overly loud. A good example would be hearing a cat hiss in another room next to you, or at the other end of a bigger sized room. Now, my brother and I had beds that were kind of right next to one another. Mine was situated towards the middle of the room, and his was closer to the door, but still in the middle of the room, if that makes sense. If you're looking at our beds from the door, they'd be to the middle, right, against the wall that was directly in front of me when looking from my bed while lying down. If you're looking at our beds from the door, they'd be to the middle, right, and there was dresser directly to your right, about four feet away, and another sh straight ahead against the wall that was directly in front of me 
when looking from my bed while lying down. So I'm trying to go back to sleep, but the hissing was getting louder and is not helping at all. Suddenly, out of the peripheral view, at this point I'm lying down facing my bro, kind of to my right. I see something moving and instantly felt this sense of dread that made me freeze, not only emotion, but my thoughts too. I could only focus on what was moving, but couldn't bring myself to look or think to wake up my brother. It had been completely enthralled for a little while. Very tough to explain this feeling. Anything after about what seemed like an eternity, but likely only a couple minutes. I was able to turn my head to see what it was, and nothing was there. The hissing had gone back to a lower volume, and I wasn't completely frozen in fear anymore. Eventually, I got back to sleep, just after it started getting light out. The following morning, I convinced myself that I was either dreaming or overly stimulated imagination from being so scared. A few days later, the same thing happens, but this time I was lying on my back and could see clearly, directly in front of me, and directly in front on the dresser was this figure, dark smoky figure, with these huge reddish deep orange eyes. It seemed to be kind of shifting in and out of reality, like it was trying to cross over from a different plane of existence. It was opening its mouth when the hissing noise came out as well. It was about two feet tall and resembled what I can only explain as a goblin or a demon. I am again frozen in fear as I am watching this, wondering if it's real, if I'm dreaming, anything else that would explain what it is I am experiencing. Then I wake up. This is now twice it has happened, and the hissing still happens every night like clockwork, sometimes more intense than others but terrifying all the same. For a few nights after this, I had to sleep in the same bed as my brother and made him face me because I was so scared. Then two nights after, I'm sleeping in my own bed again. It happens again, only this time, it hasn't taken form, and it is flying, jumping from one dresser to the other, right over our feet, staring at me the entire time with those damn eyes. Hissing, always hissing. I can see its black wings, like a bat's wings, partially torn on one of them. Still frozen, I finally let out the loudest scream I could courage up. Within seconds, my mother is at the door asking what is going on. My father is two steps behind. My mother tries to turn on the light, but it won't turn on. And aside from my scream, I'm still completely frozen and can't move or answer anyone. This entity is now on the dresser that is four feet away from my parents to their right and slightly behind them. They are looking at me to see if I am sleeping. And this thing is looking straight at me the entire time, but not hissing anymore. Once I realized it wasn't hissing, I yelled, behind you, and both my parents turned to look at my brother to make sure he was okay. And he wakes up from the commotion. I look back towards the dresser and nothing, no more entity, no more hissing, nothing. After that, there was no more experiences, and I was still scared for months afterwards. I'm not sure what this thing was, but there are three possibilities that I can come up with. One, I was dreaming it, or imagining it at all, but that does not explain my brother hearing it acknowledging the hissing sound. Two, it was real. Something was present in our house and terrorizing me. 3. My brother was conjuring this thing unknowingly, his unconscious sleep, and it was manifesting in real life. Anyone ever have a similar experience or know someone who has? I have always believed my childhood home has had a presence since I was young, but this night has set that belief in stone. I live in a one-story house that was built in the 1900s. It has an open floor plan and my room is the last room down the only enclosed hallway in this home. Also, it's only room that faces the street 
other than my father's office that was added on after the home was built. Despite being at the end, there are two entrances, the door from the hallway and a Jack and Jill bathroom that connects to my mother's office. This Jack and Jill has a cabinet that refuses to remain shut, and my bathroom lights never have lasted long enough, though they are LEDs, usually lasting three weeks to a month. Also a note, I have a fan in the Jack and Jill. Fan faces the opposite way for context towards my room away from the cabinet. Hallway because the AC does not work in my room because of a design flaw in my home. I am from Arizona. On Sunday night, I organized my backpack for my school day and made sure all my assignments were in for school. As I winded down and plugged my phone in and turned off my lights, I sat down on my bed. It was 1.45 a.m. at this point. I heard slight shuffling. I own a cat, so I assumed it was him. And then I heard the cabinet door hit the wall that is behind it. I then remembered my dad sometimes gets up and watches YouTube at this time of night and sometimes grabs toilet paper or batteries stored there so I dismissed it but then I heard the fan click and one of the cabinets slam. He is very gentle with doors in this house and gets very irritated if anything slams. He was now ruled out so being a main character I yelled out dad is that you? Getting no response I moved to mom? The no noises started in the bathroom area, so I yelled, Whoever is there better leave. The noises stopped, and I made a mad dash for my desk and grabbed the box cutter I was using for a project, then yelled out, Leave now, then very loud footsteps running away. I grabbed my phone and called my father, concerned that this intruder was grabbing a knife from our kitchen. I frantically told my dad, I believe that someone is in the house. He woke immediately and met up with me in my room. Then after making sure I was unharmed, searched the whole house and reviewed the footage from the camera in the kitchen that faces the hallway. My room is down. Nothing walked past. Nothing was in the hallway. And now my cat refuses to go into this hallway even though my room is his favorite and will cry and sprint out of it when carried back now. The next day, my mom found that three huge binders that had been in a box managed to fall out and down onto her office floor. I plan on doing a smoke cleanse, but for now, I sleep with all my lights on and with the box cutter on my nightstand. Now my laptop that is brand new is freezing up while typing. This I plan on updating with other stories from my childhood as I plan on moving out soon for college. So this happened a bit ago. So me and my friend and others were at a party for a play we did. It got canceled due to COVID. And therefore, we were at school around 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And this happened around 8.30ish. I left the party room to go to the toilet. As I was in the cubicle, I hear a man and a woman speaking. But the only people in the building were me and my friends. So I headed back to my friends to see them bolting down the stairs. They were up there as they heard noises. There was no one up there, though. And no one downstairs, either. The bathroom was downstairs, so we bolted it out of that building. 